Now I'm going to talk about how to use error bars to make conclusions about data. So what exactly does an error bar show on a graph? Well, if we go one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the average, then this range of data indicates 66% of all data that was collected for that version of the independent variable amongst all trials. So if the error bars do not overlap with any other error bars from any other versions of the independent variable, then we can say that the majority of the data for that one group is different from all of the others that you're comparing it against. On the other hand, if the error bars do overlap, then you can say that um, that data for the one group is not particularly different from the group that you're comparing it with, since a lot of the data overlaps between the different versions of the independent variable. Let's have a look at this with some examples. This is the graph from the Excel table that was created in the Excel tutorial. As you can see, Boyce field is represented by the bar on the left, Sandpit field in the middle, and Hay field on the right. This is a graph of soil temperature in degrees centigrade versus the habitat location. So, which location has the highest soil temperature? In order to really um, assess this, yes, of course, we have to look at the averages, but we also have to look at the error bars. All we do is draw a line across from the bottom of the error bar, which has the highest soil temperature, in this case, the hay field and assess whether or not it overlaps with any of the other error bars from the other versions of the independent variable, in this case the habitat locations. As we can see, this line does not overlap with any of the other error bars, and therefore the majority of the data that was collected about the soil temperature for the hay field is significantly different from that of the sand pit or Boyce field. And so we can say that hay field in fact, has the highest soil temperature, and it's conclusive. Let's reverse the question now. Which location has the lowest soil temperature? In this case, we can see that the average soil temperature for Boyce Field is lower than that of Sand Pit and Hay Field. However, if we draw an error bar across, sorry, a line across from the top of the error bar of Boyce Field. We can see that a large portion of data for Sand Pit Field actually falls below that line, meaning there is a significant portion of data from Sand Pit Field which ends up being lower than, or the same as, than the data um, from Boyce Field. Therefore, we cannot conclusively tell which of these locations has the lowest soil temperature. It's definitely between Boyce Field and Sand Pit Field because, as we've already agreed, Hay Field has conclusively the highest soil temperature, but it is inconclusive which habitat has the lowest soil temperature. And that's all there is to it.